it's not necessarily about uh, uh, being competitive or not being competitive. It's about knowing the game that you're in when you're in it. The, there is competition in an infinite game. The, the truest competitor in an infinite game is yourself, right? To say I'm the best X you know, in, in the industry is nonsense because you don't know everybody else. It's actually a stupid comparison. It's a stupid thing to say. It's, it's, it's empirically not true. Um, but you can strive to be a better version of yourself. How do I do better this year than I did last year? How do I improve my service this year, make it better than it was last year? How do I make my leadership better this year than it was last year? How do I improve my tech this year than it was last year? Whatever the thing is, there's always a constant and intense drive to win, uh, or, or to improve, rather. Even annual goals are arbitrary. Like, how do we come up with our annual goals? Here's how we do it. We sit down, we go, so uh, how much business do you want to do next year? How about this number? How about this number? OK. And that's it. That's how you pick your annual goal. And the reason we choose annual is because that's when we pay taxes. Why not, why not 17 months? That seems perfectly legitimate. It's all arbitrary. And so we become fixated about hitting an arbitrary number on an arbitrary date. We are so upset if we miss it, and we think we've won something when we hit it. It's nonsense. We have to change our mindset away from thinking of it like a sporting event and think of it more like lifestyle. Right? Running a business is much more like trying to be healthy. Right? What does it take to build a great business? You need great sales, you need great marketing, you need great leadership, you need great people, you actually got to do the service. It's very hard to do all those things well all the time. But it's a striving. It's a striving. Right? And you can absolutely have arbitrary goals. Right? Um, and let's say you hit your goal. You, you, you lose that amount of weight on the right date. You feel great, you celebrate and then you still have to keep exercising for the rest of your life. Like, you haven't won anything, yeah. right? <laughs> but what's, I think, more interesting is what happens if you don't lose the weight by that, by that date? What happens if you miss the goal? Yeah. You know what happens? Nothing. nothing. Nothing happens. In fact, you're way healthier now than you were when you started because you've been doing all the right things to be healthy. You just picked the wrong time and the wrong date. Uh, the, wrong, uh, the wrong number on the wrong date. And you can clearly look at the trend that you'll hit it in a month or two. No big deal, right? And so business is the same way, which is what's more important in an infinite game is to see the trend data. So we, we, we do this all the time. We bonus people because they hit a goal, and we ignore people because we ignored the trend, right? But we don't know how they hit the goal or if it's going to be able to continue. What's way more important is the trend data because it means you're building a healthy business. You just picked the wrong date on the wrong time. So that's an infinite mindset. This is fabulous. And I, the piece that you just hit on, actually, this is really interesting. So there, we have a long standing belief, especially in this industry that I've witnessed, that you set the budget and the budget's the budget and you go get the budget yeah. by any means necessary. I mean, if you didn't learn a lesson from COVID, you know, my, my favorite thing when COVID hit, I used to get this question all the time. Simon, during these uncertain times, and I would always interrupt them and say, um, all times are uncertain. You, you know, to be so dogmatic about a budget when we don't control anything, you know, the Marine Corps knows this. They, the Marine Corps has a, has, a, has a maxim, you know, no plan ever survives contact with the enemy. Well, I don't think any budget or any plan survives contact with reality, you know. But we should be realistic. I'll give you a, 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 another way of thinking about it. Think of a retail operation, right? Uh, they have a goal, we're going to open 200 stores this year. But to your point, they're hiring so quickly and they're opening stores so, uh, uh, um, uh, to hit that goal that they're hiring the wrong people, they're not training them, and they end up opening bad stores. So they'll hit their goal, but then what happens the next year? And think about the problems that they're making for themselves. Why am I going to work? people harder than they need to burn them out to hit an arbitrary number at the risk of potentially losing them long term. So remember, the goal of the infinite game is to stay in the game, right? Not to hit the goal this year. It's to stay in the game longer than anybody else. You outlast. That's the point. You build a strong, healthy business that can outlast. Here's my observation. I have met hundreds of business owners who are absolutely convinced that they've got a place where people feel valued and thousands of employees who don't feel the same way about those businesses. That's usually right. So <laughs> what, are, what are some of the, how do we invite, and, and I'm gonna ask you to really lean in courageously here to, to listen to this because you might not enjoy the answer, but 
what are some signals for our business owners to humbly confront that maybe they're not creating the environment that they think they are? Well, first and foremost, um, uh, have you ever gone to talk, to listen? Because you're not listening for words, you're listening for meaning. And the goal of listening is not to prove that you heard. The goal of listening is that they feel heard, right? Um, and so you don't have to agree with everything and you don't have to like everything. You have to take it in. We've got a, an audience right now who is absolutely enjoying extraordinary success. I mean, they're going to see some numbers tomorrow about like just what they're doing, but they know it as well. I mean, they're growing, they're profitable, they're in an expanding industry, and we've got private equity money rolling in at a rate that PE has said they haven't seen anything like it in you know, 30, 40 years and so forth. Why would they change course to adopt a just cause right now if winning and playing a finite game is working at this level? I mean, I'm not here to convince anybody of anything. The question is, what kind of business do you want to build? You know, do you want to build, build a business that serves as a legacy for you? You know, um, do, you want to, do you want to lie on your deathbed and say, I wish I made a little more money? Or do you want to lie on your deathbed and say, I, I had an impact in the lives of people? Right. How do you do that? How do you go back to the same people you're saying winning is everything right. to and, and humble yourself and bring them on the journey with you to change course? So first of all, let's be crystal clear for the people who are freaking out at this conversation. <laughs> the infinite game is not the absence of finite games. Right. It's the context within which finite games exist. Nice. And I'll give you a real life example of someone who made a conversion. His name is Rick Elias. He's a very, very important uh, executive and case study. Um, uh, uh, Rick, do you remember the US Airways flight that landed on the Hudson a bunch of years ago? Okay, Rick was in seat 1A. And he tells the story of the engines going out and total silence and preparing to die. And what was going through his mind was, I'm either gonna die in a horrible, fiery ball of you know, awfulness, or I'm gonna drown in the icy Hudson. That's pretty much what's gonna happen. And you go through the proverbial life flashing before your eyes and, and all of that. And the miracle was that no one died. And Rick talks about it as the greatest lesson ever because usually when people have a near-death experience where they get to learn these lessons, usually there's survivor's guilt because there is death and destruction or there's, there's pain. And in this case, no one died, no injuries. It was the perfect lesson. Now, Rick was a finite-minded, high-flying driven executive prior who thought he was hot shit because he built a company worth $600 million. Um, and he thought he was the bee's knees, right? And you asked him if he thought if he was good, and he, he was good, right? And he recognized that he'd sacrificed relationships to make that money. He recognized that he'd sacrificed happiness and health to make that money. And um, that near-death experience transformed him to think of how he was gonna build his, his business completely differently. He's still a very A-type personality. He's still very much driven to win. You know, none of that went away, but he embraced an infinite mindset. What he now knows is an infinite mindset. He and I have gotten to know each other. And um, here's what happens when you embrace an infinite mindset. His business is now worth 15 billion. Hmm. They say there are three ways to transform your identity, conditioning, change environment, or a significant emotional event. And for me, uh, you inspired in, in me a just cause of ushering in a world in which when people ask how are you, they really ask, and when they answer, you really listen. You're very generous with your words, thank you. But I want to underscore, listen to what his just cause was, to live in a world in which, in which people ask you how you are and mean it, and, and then tell you, what, what was it? The, and then when you answer, and, they really listen. And then when you answer, they really listen. That is absolutely applicable to absolutely any business here. And imagine how you treat your people differently if that's your vision. Imagine how you, what training you have to give to your people that they would treat each other and your customers so that you can build that world. The business is irrelevant. It's, it's, it's the manner in which you conduct the business that matters.